No one will uh, will be appreciate our love because we're two white people. <laughs> <laughs>35 people watching live. Wow. Oh, cool. cool. Yes. This is fun. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming. <laughs> We're done now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so the that's, that's all we idea promised. here was that because you're all here in person, we didn't want to just do like a normal road trip podcast and talk about movies soon. What state would it be? Washington, D.C. Okay, yeah, we don't want to do that. We'll do that next week when, you know, we were back in the studio. So we wanted to do something unique and fun and audience participatory. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we had you write down an actor and an actress and a director, and we're going to do Mad Lib stuff. Fine. Is there any kind of, like, we really didn't plan this very well. I think we pick <laughs> one of each, and then each of us uh, pitches a movie okay. with those all right, actors. All right. Is that all right, right Barrett? No, that's, that's correct. correct. Okay, right. so I need a volunteer to be my first picker. That sounds dirty. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pretty these sure are actor, these are actresses. These are actors. All right. So don't look. Pick one. Pick one from here. Hopefully it's not blank. All right. Pick one from here. All right. Now everybody get ready to hope, see. The idea is that this is funny even if we're not because of the <laughs> Mad Lib setup. That's the. All right. So Michael Bay directing oh. Lady Gaga, and oh Nicholas Cage. God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Oh, I love that movie. I was oh. right. It is funny. This, this cannot be a better movie to talk about. I mean, that's you don't even have to come up with anything. I mean, that's yeah. that's leaving Las Vegas too, right? Leaving Las Vegas too? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. I mean, where do you start with those kind of personalities? I oh mean, my God. Nicolas Cage has obviously already been with Michael Bay one time. Yes. In the spiritual, biblical sense. In the spi- yes, exactly. <laughs> um, In a movie, is yeah, what it means. Yes. Uh, That's what you meant. Uh, let's make Lady Gaga the the uh, the heroine of this movie, and yeah. Nicolas Cage is like the guy who's like in jail that she has to save the entire time, or something like that. Mm. If what there's would, anything Michael Bay is known for, it's for directing the hell out of women and getting really yes, good yes, yes. nuanced performances. Yes, he's, he's like yeah, he's like nuanced, James Cameron yes. that way. He's really really good at that. Winners um, go home and fuck the prom. All right, <laughs> but this is Lady Gaga's uh, apparently second movie. Mm-hmm. Do, do we? Do we, is she typecast? Is she a singer? In yes, this? of course she is, because yeah, it's a Michael Bay movie, yeah. and she is, her explosions are her songs. Yep. How about this? How about this? How about this? It's actually a sequel to A Star is Born, but you spell born like Jason Bourne, mm. and it becomes part of the Bourne universe. Wow. A Star is so she's Born. A star she's Jason star. Bourne's sister. She never knew she was an agent. Yes. But now Lady Gaga. Yes, yeah, she she has this amazing pop career, and then and then Jason Bourne knocks on her door, and, yes. and he's like he's like, oh by the way, you're a secret badass bitch, and then you know then she like you know starts. Uh, That's it. Yeah, and he dies. 
Matt Damon dies. Of course he does. At the beginning yeah. of the, within the first five minutes. Yeah, Lady Gaga does it. She's the one who yeah. kills him. Yeah. Without at a swim, at a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> at a swimming pool in the shallow end, in the sha sha shallow <laughs> Yes. Yes. I just want the climax to be like a big. She's performing at like the Grammys or something, but she's not dancing. She's dodging bullets. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> the spies are trying like to kill it. her, but she's still killing it. Like she's still giving it uh, in both ways. Oh yeah. And now what ways. do we call this thing? I mean, other than a star. Is born it's a too. star is born. Just spell born differently. Mm. Right. Okay, we haven't All even right. gotten to the cage part, yeah. by the way. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> At this is why I vote for leaving Las Vegas too. I yeah. don't know why that's not still in the cards. Uh, yeah, how does Nicholas Cage? We, maybe we, maybe we don't put him in jail anymore. Maybe we have him as I don't maybe know. Maybe he's the president. Yeah, he could be. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Oh, Nicholas yeah. Cage, the I'm president. Sorry, yes. Chris Greenwood is the president. Yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. no other option. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, Nicholas Cage is the vice president. Maybe he could be like. A shady record label executive. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, this could. is getting worse the more I talk. Mm. <laughs> but it's a Michael Bay movie. Though. He could be. He could be her manager. Yeah. 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 Um, Are we trying to make a movie worse than Battlefield Earth? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> no. <'Cause... laughs> if he's if he's a oh, high level operative though, she is trying to break him out of some sort of like Russian prison or something like that, mm-hmm. right? Uh, he's being detained. He was her mentor and all that stuff. He he taught her everything. That she knew. But, twist. So, she goes to break him out. He gets out, but he turns evil. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Evil. Yes. Like the fruits of the devil. And so yes. they have to have it out between Cage and Gaga. And they have this crazy thing with explosions and shit. Oh, yeah. The cage Done. match. Finn. <laughs> Finn. Hey. All, all Oscars. Yeah. Everybody gets Oscars. And all we right. have somebody run out of the room and say, Morpheus and Neo is fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. we, we just made that movie happen. Like we that. did. Yeah. Um, a star is born with a U. <laughs> uh, another volunteer for Pickings. Come on, sir. <clears throat> Pickings. I gotta come up with a better name. Pickings. I'm not going to, but I got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, now he's now he's looking now. I, yeah. I didn't. Um, Viola Davis. Yeah. Okay. This movie's already gonna get not Michael Sarah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, and Barry Jenkins. So one of these things is not like the Yeah. <laughs> it's basically Michael it's Michael Sarah in If Beale Street could talk. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> Oh goodness! Wow. Um, maybe we maybe we're ready for a Michael Sarah. Like maybe that, he does a serious role here. Maybe there you go. But what what does he play in a Barry Jenkins movie? Though? Maybe he's a student. She's a teacher. Things happen. Who knows? I don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. oh, I like that. I like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Go with like a psychosexual we can't, drama. We can't. We've got to go different here. We can't make Michael Sarah the stupid racist white guy, right? Right. We, right. Uh, Let's make him the really smart racist white. Guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Make a smart racist white, guy. like somebody who makes really great points. <laughs> <laughs> His, his opinions are evil, but he does make a good point. Yes. <laughs> You're like, I, I don't know. It's pretty well reasoned. Um, no, no, that's terrible, guys. Yeah, no, that's terrible. Um, but uh, I would like to avoid his character being like some super racist guy. Or something like maybe that. we, may, may, let's what? let's just not even make race part of the deal. Mm. Let's do it a buddy cop comedy. We'll just oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A buddy cop comedy, but that's, that's not the type great. of movie Barry Jenkins makes, though. No, but maybe he's ready to stretch too. Maybe. Although, no, it probably would be a drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's I like drama. the idea of uh, of her being his teacher. She seduces him because mm-hmm. who can resist? I wouldn't. The power of the Sarah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then it, it devolves into this weird relationship that maybe has a racial tinge to it. Maybe it can be like unfaithful, where one of them murders somebody. Yes. <laughs> yes. Spoiler. <laughs> or it could just be an episode of how to get away with murder yeah it could be oh, I, I like it that. let's yeah. do it it's okay. unfaithful with Michael Sarah and Viola Davis so we're remaking unfaithful I'm, that's okay yeah, yeah. with Barry Jenkins who's the, let's, let, who's the who's in the Oliver Barry Jenkins wants to get his Adrian Lent on like mm-hmm. can we cast the person that, the lover that gets murdered but Donald Glover oh yeah. <laughs> So now Michael Sarah's murdering Donald Glover? Yes. 
I love it. Uh, <laughs> which is which is awesome because that was one of his jokes, Donald Glover, when they were talking about him being Spider Man, <laughs> yeah. and and uh, and he's and somebody wrote in the comments order that's like Michael Sarah being uh, Shaft, yeah. and he's like, you know how long I wait in line to see Michael Sarah play Shaft? It's <laughs> perfect. It's meant to be. Yeah. So now in this movie, he gets you know there's a there's a whole well you know we have to kill Michael Sarah though. Does anybody else have any ideas? I don't so like is it, is it, So they're falling in love? Michael Viola Sarah Davis? and Viola Davis are having a torrid affair. Can we call it Swoonlight? Mm. <laughs> no, nobody laughs at that. I'm gonna have That's it. Laugh. That's it. I like We're these done. guys. <laughs> I like, these are my people. We cannot make every time. You guys already part. laughed at the show. Listen, that that's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> he will never stop. No, I, I think I, 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 think, I, I, think, I think I like that too. They're falling in love. It's 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 illicit, but uh, but yeah, they, they, they handle it. Uh, with, uh, it's kind of an age gap there too, right? There is quite like a Harold and Maude thing. Going That's like on. a twenty thirty year age gap. Well, well Diane that. Lane was was decently older than Olivier Vernon, right? Yeah, it's probably like Olivier Vernon. That's a football player. <laughs> it's Oliver Martinez. Oliver. Yeah. I think there was about a fifteen year, maybe. What is that guy's name? It, yeah, it's something like that. Olivier Martinez. Olivier Martinez. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nice job. Mm. It's not a voice that I don't know where to talk about. All right, Frank, so, you want to help me here? The yeah. Feel free. All right, I got that one. All right, this is gonna be fun. James Cagney. Whoa. You dirty rat. McKenna Grace? Oh my god. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> okay. Hold on, who is McKenna Grace? Yeah, who is McKenna Grace again? I'm trying to remember. Little girl good at math movie. Yeah, little girl good at math. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. So I we guess. have a dead actor yeah. who's 112 <laughs> and an up and coming Dakota fanny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with Tarantino. Yeah. Script. I'll tell you what, it's going to oh, have a bad Santa vibe for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, she's 12. Yeah. Right now? Oh. She's 12? Yeah. yeah. This movie is rated PG, I'm telling you right now. Yeah, for sure. I, I, yeah. I, I feel like this is something where like, he's, her, her, he's like her lost, dead great grandfather, and so we, we would see Cagney in memories. Ooh. Something like that. Yeah. Um, so this would probably be more of a serious drama. The lovely drama. granddad. I just can't bones. picture Tarantino yeah. doing that. But. Yeah. It would be. It the would lovely be, granddad. Um, bones. It would be one of those like where you either get existing footage and make it look like it's uh, new or something like that, and, and put him in, which is something else. Tarantino they could just have like Marvel de-age James Cagney and make him like her older brother. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. Her <laughs> older <laughs> coming of age story. But Tarantino Tarantino would have a very uh, movie-centric bent to this. This would be James Cagney playing James Cagney, probably. Yeah, probably. yeah like he was an actor, a famous actor, that she's trying to... Uh, she idolizes something along yeah, those yeah. lines. Maybe, maybe he's James... Like you said, maybe he's actually James she Cagney. Has, she has to go she's to... She's a James she Cagney has to, fan. She is a, about to be in the school play, and she's garbage. <laughs> she's a wait, garbage wait, wait, wait. actor. Okay, so and then she goes and asks the long-lost ghost of James Cagney yes. how to act. Yes. No, wait, and, I just thought, has yes. anyone here seen No Retreat, No Surrender? Okay, so No Retreat, No Surrender is this crazy 80s movie where this guy really wants to be good at karate and somehow summons the ghost of Bruce Lee and he teaches him karate and then he fights Jean-Claude Van Damme and it's one of his first roles and beats him mm -hmm. after being um, taught by the ghost of Bruce Lee. <laughs> so I think you could have something like that here mm -hmm. with the school play. The ghost of James <laughs> Yeah. No recess, no yeah. surrender. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's my dude. How has no one seen No Retreat, No Surrender? Do. It's all about the name. You were about to say something. Uh, well, I just think like we could have her do a hit girl kind of thing, right? Well, if it's going to be Tarantino, she's going to have to learn some action and stuff. So she's learning from yeah. James Cagney, and she, she takes it too seriously at the school play. And ends up decapitating people and actually killing people. <laughs> or, and or she accidentally watches Yankee Doodle Dandy instead of Little Caesar uh, yeah. and misunderstands how to be a gangster. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, in, Yankee Doodle Dandy information that, that can be misconstrued when yes. you have a ghost teaching you acting. It's, it's true. true. Yeah. So yeah. Um, all of these movies are terrible. Yes, they are. <laughs> We would send the hell out of them. But that's the point, right? It is absolutely the point. <laughs> yeah, well, who but I urge pick? all of you to watch No Retreat, No Surrender <laughs> immediately. Pick us up an actress. 
No peeking. I'm not looking. Pick us up an actor. Jeez, no peeking. Me. And a director. We got, oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, all right. Uh, our actress is Regina King. Nice. Mm-hmm. Recently, yeah, we'll Oscar winner Reg- Regina King. Mm. Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> like it? Right? Oh, my God, is right. <laughs> Edgar Wright. Let's talk about Ooh, that. Ooh, I already want to see this. An Edgar Wright movie starring Jim Carrey and Regina King. Hmm. It's going to be more wow. a Jim this Carrey is, movie than is, a Regina King movie. This is Jim Carrey's comeback. <laughs> yeah. From uh, uh, Canada. From whatever, yeah, from whatever. From painting. From his yeah, painting this, career, yeah. Yeah, his painting did anybody, career. Did anybody watch Kidding, though? Wasn't that kind of Yeah, I watched Kidding. It was pretty good, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's um, very interesting. He's got dramatic chops, but if it, if it's Edgar Wright, you want to see a comedy, right? Well, and Regina King can well, totally do comedy. I mean, two, 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 seven trip. people. <laughs> but Edgar Wright has this this brilliant way of taking a genre piece and making it a comedy as well, and still being yeah. a cool genre piece. Like, what genre hasn't Edgar Wright like tackled yet? Courtroom. Oh, interesting. Oh, That's oh a shit. Great idea. Liar, liar, too. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> basically Liar Liar 2. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can you give me a pun for Liar Liar 2? <laughs> give, give me a second. Okay. I'll get there. Uh, <laughs> is, uh, is Regina King his defendant? I'm going to say Regina, like, what? Well, so is Jim Carrey on trial or is he a lawyer again? we got to put him on trial. Maybe put him on trial. Reverse the role. So if he's on trial, then Regina King is his lawyer. Then. She's mm-hmm. his lawyer. Do they fall in love? No. No, no, no. No, no because he's Regina still King with, uh, is uh, more for me. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's still a good Save father. for Jonathan. He's still doing the claw. He's he's mis- he's wrongfully accused of this crime. Right. right? That mm-hmm. character doesn't go on to a life of crime at the end of Liar Liar. Mm-hmm. What if what if he's what if he is uh, working for the police to set up the mob or somebody and we call it Wire Wire? Oh, <laughs> we found it. We found it. It took a while, but we got there. Does that, does that work? I think it worked. Man. Uh, somebody in the comments suggested Bruce Almighty Two. God is a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Regina King can play God. That could I work. Think so. Oh, for sure. Bruce Almighty too. We already had that. It was we called Evan Almighty. Evan Almighty. Yeah. 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 We, we don't need, need, any need another universe. Evan Almighty. Um, I, yeah, I'm having trouble. I'm like ha- making this an Edgar Wright movie though, because Edgar Wright is sort of a, a he's a kinetic director. Yes. Mm-hmm. So like a courtroom. So something so static as a courtroom is going to be. Well, that's where the mob comes in, right? Mm. You gotta escape mm. the mob and all that kind of I stuff. I would almost see Edgar Wright doing like a true sequel to The Mask. Like mm. something along those lines. Like I could totally see Edgar Wright killing that if anybody would actually want to watch that. But I'm just saying something along those lines. I think if you got. I'm now taking this far too seriously. Um, I think if you got like somebody like Sorkin who could write really snappy social network, a few good men type dialogue, and then you let Edgar Wright like stylize that dialogue in the court. Visually, I mm-hmm. think it could be kinetic. Yeah, the end. I like the I like the idea of Edgar Wright doing a courtroom drama. That would be really cool. Where it's a great courtroom drama, but it's also hilarious because that's what he does so well. Yeah, is he'll make a great zombie movie, but it's also hilarious, or a great action flick, but it's also hilarious. Yeah, like he's, he's really good. But at we've already got my cousin Vinny. I mean, you're not <laughs> well, you're not topping my cousin Vinny. Mm-hmm. Um, is there is there an element that we can add to this besides just like you know? I don't know. Like there, it seems like Edgar Wright likes to tackle genres when he's doing his comedy. So like Hot Fuzz is your cop buddy cop movie, and so it could be. What about we? What about Supernatural? Mm, yeah, <laughs> it's a haunted well, courtroom. He kind of did that with the, what was the? I guess he didn't direct that, but what was the Alien one that, that he was involved in? Oh uh, no, he did the World's End. No, not oh, oh, okay. World's End was Alien. Yeah. That was Jim Carrey but... murders someone he thought was a zombie. And it turns out that that person wa- wasn't a zombie. But he still gets off on the end because his, his intentions were good. There are zombies around. Yeah, there are zombies around. It's kind of like Homer killing Flanders, and he's like, he's a zombie? <laughs> um, and then, you know, then, they, then, then it's like... <laughs> and, uh, and so then, uh, yeah, I, I can see that this is this going really well. So, uh, <laughs> Green light it. <laughs> exactly. let's, let's move on to the next one. Green light it. <laughs> Who's our next picker? Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Right. All right. This could work, people. You just got to give it room to breathe. <laughs> Actress. You don't like my cousin. No peeking. No peeking. It's no peeking. Actor. It's so funny. No peeking. 
Just one. And, and director, no peeking, no peeking, no peeking. Now you can no peek, peek, but don't tell. All right, you're, 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 the fruits of your labor hath produced, oh God, I already love this shit. This is the best movie we're gonna pitch all day long. Jack Nicholson, Sorkin, Aubrey Plaza. Ooh. All the Oscars. Yeah, all the Oscars. Because Sorkin can write and direct, right? Molly's game was good mm -hmm. enough. And then you got Jack, Aubrey Plaza can totally keep up with Jack Nicholson. I think so. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Can Jack Nicholson right. keep up with Aubrey Plaza? That's, again, yeah, that's my point, right? Especially like, now that he's like, what, 85? Well, 81. Was it, was isn't he doing school. that movie with Kristen Wiig, though? Aren't they doing like some Tony Erdman remake? Yeah, or, he's doing yeah, yeah. that. Oh, he is doing that. Yeah. yeah. He, he apparently saw that movie and immediately called people <laughs> and said, hey, let's make this for me. Um, I think you'd have to de-age him a little bit. Jack? Yeah. For, just for anything? He's looking a little gnarly these days. <laughs> Jack's looked a little gnarly since he was 30. Yeah. Like, no, he was charmingly gnarly before, yeah. but now he's, now he's just gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they have Aaron Mako. We, we put James well, Cagney in a movie, man. We can do something with Nicholson. <laughs> And it's interesting, it's Plaza, because she was in that Bad Grandpa movie, yes. right? With De Niro, <laughs> and she hooks up with De Niro. Yeah. So, I'm not saying we should do that, but I'm just saying that's interesting, that then she would do one with Nicholson. Uh, Let's reverse it then, so it's Bad Grandma, and we age her up, and we <laughs> de-age Jack Nicholson. Uh -huh. So he's like a 19-year-old pool boy. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like uh, Angelica Houston type. There you go. Retired the, actress. It's like Freaky Friday. It's, yeah. like, it's yes. Freaky Friday meets the, the, uh, the Quiet American. Yeah, Quiet American, yes. Please, please, please explain um. that more. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going back to a buddy cop comedy. Let's do that. You know, that's, uh, so it would be a reteam of A Few Good Men, right? So yeah, Sorkin, Sorkin and, and uh, yep. Jack Nicholson, mm -hmm. so we know that he can handle... That dialogue, oh, yeah. and she could too. Oh yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I would watch this movie. I could. It could be my dinner with Andre, and movie, I would watch yes. whatever this movie is. Yeah, I'm gonna watch I, it. We're watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah. I can't. I still. It would have to be something. Um, I mean, Sorkin deals in a lot of law stuff, but I mean, we've already we, we keep getting to courtrooms. I hate this. Yeah, let's do something um, non courtroom Okay, yeah. so the the chat had an interesting idea about making Aubrey Plaza uh, a like social media influencer. Like, you know, kind of from the new generation, and then he's like an aged actor, and he's trying to figure out how to be relevant today, that kind of thing. And like so Chef. She, so, yeah, so she teaches him how to be relevant today, and together they make the best movie ever made. Oh. All right. She, te she teaches him how to be relevant in what? Like in today's society, like to use YouTube and social media and And then they make the best movie ever made? Ever made, yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's a movie about making a movie. Yeah. And social media. And Sorkin would love that. Like, he would love it. the idea of, like, you know, writing, the writing process. Like, I think he'd have yeah. a lot of fun with that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, and lately, Sorkin's been doing a lot of, like, it's been based on real life stuff. Steve Jobs, Molly's Game, Social Network, yep. all these. Is there a story of our time that's kind of, that kind of mm. fits into this? The Shoe Bomber! <laughs> it's Richard... But I mean, Roper. What is his name? It was Roper. Roper. It wasn't Richard Roper. Did you it just was... make Richard Roper the shoe no, bomber? Sure did. The <laughs> shoe bomber's name was Richard. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Richard Kimball. Fars to get in. Yeah, I, you're right, but I don't remember yeah. that last name either. But that's also probably not the movie we would make. No, no. The shoe no. bomber. Aaron Sorkin, uh, the shoe bomber. I wouldn't make it about Nichols that he'd just be sitting at Laker games the entire time. So it's Richard Richard Reed is the shoe. Yeah. Bomber. Richard Reed was the shoe bomber. What if it was the true story of everything that's going on with like uh, buying your kids way into college and that kind of stuff right now? Mm. Where, sure, <laughs> yeah, sure. Sorkin write that, yeah. and Aubrey Plaza is the whatever the girl's name that's on YouTube and was one of the you know girls who had her way bought in. And I certainly don't know her name. Uh, I, I, I have not been following that story. It's, it's Lori Laughlin's daughter, but I don't know her name. Yeah. Yes. Are they is. Uh, are they going to go to jail for that stuff? Um, I think somebody might. Really? I think this. I think somebody oh, well. ought. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm it's awful, to, man. I mean, what about all the people that worked hard and didn't get in? Yeah. She That's, didn't even want to go. What? The daughter didn't even want to go. She, she like, didn't. She wanted to be a YouTuber. Yeah. And her parents were like, "No, you're going to college." I think it makes a Olivia great story. That's all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. actually just came up in the comments. All right, a little all right. let's call it. Let's call it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it time. Where are we at? Time of death. <laughs> um, all right, so we still... 
Are we going to do any? Are we, is, it, is this the whole? Are we doing recommends and warns at all? Or? Let's go for a few more rounds of this, and then we'll, all right. we'll do some. Somebody be my picker. Recommends. Come on, come on, pick. Oh, you go next. <coughs> She'll go this time. You go next. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you have been pre-picked to be the next picker. Don't See, if you had know. seen No Retreat, No Surrender, you would have like known what to do shirt. there. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, stop making, stop trying to make No Retreat, No Surrender. <laughs> <laughs> It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It really doesn't make right. a weird thing. <laughs> so, for director, we have Boz Lerman. Okay. Ooh. Obviously, one of my favorites. Yes. yes. Red curtain. Yeah, that's like very. For an actress, we have Lady Gaga. No. <laughs> no, that's actually perfect. See, this is actually, yeah, extremely perfect. Yeah, so far. Now, who are we going to get? Oh, we have two actresses. Lupita Nyongo? We have. Let's, let's do two actresses Lupita Nyongo. There you go. Okay. All right. Well, this is obviously a bombastic musical. Yes. Yes. Um. And, uh, God, we've already gone through this whole Lady Gaga celebrity thing, though. Yeah, yeah. Let's, um, let's take inspiration from our friend Jeremy Simser and make this a bombastic Boz Lerman musical about roller derby. Oh! Yes! Yes! yes. Lady Gaga is the star of her, captain of her roller derby team. Mm-hmm. Lupita Nyong'o is the new recruit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Something there. Yeah, it's uh, it sounded a lot like the uh, the 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 Drew Barrymore uh, oh, yeah. uh, movie, but with, but without the musical part. <laughs> okay, uh, and without so Boz Lerman's touch. I don't like Boz Lerman at all. Mm-hmm. Right? He doesn't like you either. But I could see him with his ability to to manipulate colors and really make visual eye popping stuff. Mm-hmm. You could really do something with this roller derby thing with all the different costumes, all the. The crazy style. A lot style of kinetic comes... action already there. Yeah, and they go into these yeah. big musical numbers where they're like, you know, hitting the other, <laughs> the you know, like doing all these like all this type of stuff and just like punching people and everything in yep. a choreographed. Ooh, way. the big opening number can be called "The Wheels Are in Motion," <laughs> <laughs> and it's a play on words about the skate wheels <laughs> yeah. and also a new burgeoning roller derby career. Yes, is beginning. One of the songs has to be called "Rock and Roll." Good, well, right? Is it? Is yep. it Xanadu though? Doesn't that have to do with? Then there's skating in Xanadu. I feel like we could I do think like there's this could be like a Xanadu. this could be like a Xanadu remake. <laughs> Jonathan, stop coming up with movies we don't know. That was hilariously mean. Ooh, uh, I mean, have to be the seventies or eighties. I don't know, man. I almost want Boz Lerman to go like to the eighteen fifties and give me some really anachronistic, like, <laughs> oh, I love roller that. derby. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's with great. like long was, Vert- Victorian coats. Yes. And oh my god! Yes, <laughs> this movie's the best one ever. Yes, yes. Oh, I love that so I would much. Watch no, that the worked. shit out of that me movie. Too. Holy crap! Yes, it's in the Victorian era. It's a, it's very steampunk, like, like dangerous steam liaisons punk. with oh, dance. steampunk. Yes, yes. Oh, that's all come down. No, that is perfect because this is what Boz Lerman would do. Yeah, somebody yeah. set up a girl fund me and <laughs> all, the, all the skates have like wagon wheels. Did you wheels say, on them did you like say <laughs> Victorian skates? Did you say girl fund me? <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Maybe Freudianly, <laughs> yeah. but I didn't mean to. Oh, okay. Uh, um, that was excellent. We no, can't... I like that idea. I think it's the best one we come up. We with. can't top that. Let's let's do another. <laughs> Baz, Baz. Ba- not Baz. Okay. Baz. Baz. I guess you would know. <laughs> she would. She would. <laughs> and whip it. Was that Drew Barrymore yeah, yeah, yeah. movie? Which Whip- is actually really good. Yeah, it's not bad. No, that's a good movie. Yeah, I think okay. Whip It's good. Whip Here's it's another really one good. that's not actually <laughs> uh, humorous, and we can make a good movie out of this. Matt Damon, Kate Blanchett, and Rob Reiner as oh. the director. Oh. Oh. So Rob this Reiner, is already Rob Reiner finally comes back. This is already a Best Picture nominee before yeah, it's would, even filmed. I don't know. I think there is no director more than Rob Reiner. I would love to see make a great film again. This should be this should yeah. be a medical drama. Ooh. Right, they're set. Uh, Matt Damon is the the hotshot attending at a hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, Benji, she'd be like the in charge, right? She'd be like the chief. Make it in an alcohol rehabilitation center, right? Mm-hmm. And so he's the the addiction specialist. Kate Blanchett 
is almost like her character in Blue Jasmine, mm -hmm. where she's the recovering oh, okay. addict. This right? sounds hilarious. Yeah. Last <laughs> <laughs> galore. <Wow. Wow. laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so they form a bond that goes be beyond the doctor patient relationship. Mm -hmm. And they have to, to figure out how to mitigate that while she's recovering from her alcohol addiction. Mm. And Oscars Mi and Michael Sierra could play a patient that's also a racist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah ab absolutely. Um, What's the name of the movie? Uh, hang on, it's said, coming to me. She said she's alcoholic. Yes, and a hospital doctor cures her. Booze traveler. Oh God, <laughs> that's actually the name of a show. Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> travel drinking show on some cable network. Uh, Might be the travel network. I just don't see Rob Reiner doing this type of movie though. Mm. Uh, well, the guy did. He did North, right? Yeah, he's yeah. he's done he's done some dramas. Yeah, he's done some dramas. He, yeah, he's done some dramas. he, he did goes to Mississippi. Mississippi yeah. Um, uh, but um, I just feel like Rob Reiner would want to come back and do something more comedy. More comedy, based. yeah. I think it'd have to be almost like a rom com, right? Like that's what he. If Why he's can't make it be about comeback, alcoholism and be a comedy? Absolutely. Ooh. <laughs> A comedic take on it. Yeah, say. I mean, yeah. I mean, are they? What if they were the... always they were always antagonizing each other, and that's how they fell in love in the hospital as she was attending him, and we called it needled. Ooh. <laughs> no, well, you know, it's an IV. I was thinking more of the IV than the heroin, but you know, what, but, whatever you want to go with yeah. that. Unfortunately, the, uh, many people would be asking that. That's question. true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> They're actually almost the exact same age. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that actually works. That's the first time and we've got an age appropriate. And it's, uh, it's a it's a talented Mr. Ripley uh, reunion. Oh, oh yeah. I forgot all about that. They uh, they never hooked up in that movie, do they? Mm. No. I mean, it's yeah. It's sort of like it's implied he, that they would have eventually. Really? Yeah. Yeah. If he wasn't a killer. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If he wasn't killing his boyfriend. Actually, I, they probably do hook up. After the movie ends. Oh, yeah. Because he kills the dude mm -hmm. so that she won't find out he's mm -hmm. his dude. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, he probably does, like, I don't know. That guy wrote, like, 17 novels about Ripley. Yeah. Probably actually in a story wasn't somewhere. It, uh, wasn't it a her that wrote that? Patricia Highsmith. Yeah, Patricia Highsmith. It was, it was definitely a her that wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Movie's awesome. Um, well, yeah, we can't uh, generate a good one for Damon and Blanche. I mean, <laughs> alcoholism, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, the only, only thing about that is I, I feel like I've seen that movie a hundred times. Possibly, yeah. Does, I kind of feel like that's what would happen if Rob Reiner came back to try and make another You're movie. probably right, though. Yeah. Because it's been a while. Yeah, the cold hard truth. It's entertaining. I mean, we were talking about how old Jack Nicholson is. How old is Rob Reiner? Uh... Probably, what's your what's your guess, probably, Chris? I'm gonna let's see. Probably mid seventies. Well, he was in All in the Family in the seventies. Yeah. So I'm going to say that he is seventy one. Oh, 72. Yeah. This man's a robot. And, and I mean that in the nice, well, in the nice way. He just turned 72 a week ago. Oh, oh. Yes. oh, sir. oh sir. It was uh, actually two weeks, but. Oh, yes, yes, two weeks ago. Yes, you're right, you're right. All right. All right, we beat uh, that dead one? horse. Uh, yep. Anyone else? We anyone definitely want to beat another one. A movie about beating a dead horse. <laughs> Sweet. It could be called Beating Wasn't a that Dead Hot Horse. Wasn't that Hot to Frog? <laughs> Matt Damon plays myself. the horse. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh, sweet. There's like six names on this piece of paper. <clears throat> did you know he was Kate? married to Penny Marshall for ten years? I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. Uh, that's some interesting <laughs> sex. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. We're bringing another one back from the dead. Kate Winslet, Fred Astaire. I didn't know Kate Winslet was dead. Yeah. yeah I know. <laughs> and then... Mike Flanagan. Hmm. This is the guy who made the uh, Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, so did well, this. we have a perfect thing then. He did Gerald Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire is haunting Kate Winslet <coughs> uh, while she's staying in Cameron Diaz's vacation house. Is he, no, wait, that's yeah. another one. Is he coming from sweet tap dancing hell? <laughs> 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 Okay. I, I feel like Fred Astaire's ghost would not be helpful. Sweet. I was hoping that would happen. <laughs> I'd like to uh, take this opportunity to have everybody turn off their cell phones. And, um, that was fitting. I feel like a ghost of Fred Astaire would not be helpful. He's, a, he's, an, evil, he's an evil spirit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, he was an evil person. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's ultimately <laughs> evil, but he, he appears as Fred Astaire. So mm -hmm. you think, oh, no, he's, he's perfectly fine. Oh, it's fine. not somebody that I can trust. Yes. But guess what? Can't trust. It's Can't trust. Beelzebub. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he just um, looks like Fred Astaire. <laughs> um, it's like the ghost of well, Duke Ellington okay, so, on Big Mouth. Okay, so is... I think Fred Astaire is in this movie, but uh, there's a uh, there's a great novel by Peter Straub called Ghost Story. They made this terrible adaptation of it, like in 1980. And I think Fred Astaire is actually in that. And what it's about is it's like these old men that have like this club where they try to they tell ghost stories, and then you find out there's like this uh, secret in their past where there was this woman that they uh, they they murdered basically, or one of them did. I can't remember exactly. So you could do like a good version of that. Maybe Flanagan would just do like a good version of that. Yeah. Kate Winslet plays the woman. I think Madeline Stowe played her in the original. I've seen that movie. Yeah. Well, is it not good? I remember to be I, it, right. It's. I mean, it's it's just not as good as the. I mean, the book's just so good. So. Mm. And we've already seen that he can take material that's been done before. Yeah, exactly. Gerald's done, game and was done terribly, and then yeah. made it made it. Oh, good. The Haunting Hill House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you like that show, right? Yeah. It's yeah, it's great. It's a good oh, show. Yeah, that show was good. He's a good director. Um, He's got another movie on Netflix called Hush that's really good if nobody's seen that. It's so good. Um, <laughs> All right. And then Finally he came up with a movie everybody understands. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and he's doing the Doctor Sleep adaptation, which is kind of a pseudo sequel to The Shining. Oh, so. oh right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Was that a good uh, book? Yes. Yeah. Was it really? Yes. Okay. It's about the kid, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does he go back to the hotel? That's a, kind of, yeah. Kind of. Like, uh, like is Ready it, Player is it One. Is it like Ready Player One? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, what do we got? Let's do one more. One more? Right. You want to pick? All right. Yeah. Oscar winner, Spike Lee. Spike Lee. Directing possibly the two whitest people in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah? Casey Affleck and Rachel McAdams. Whoa. Obviously, I love Oh, my God. Where do we start on this one? <laughs> to say anything. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So Spike... Maybe you call it Antarctic Fever? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's uh, about, done, but done and done. I want they're to see a, it. They're at a research facility oh, my God. <laughs> in Antarctica. Oh, my God. You got Chris like, to no go, one, oh my God. No one, no one will, uh, will be appreciate our love because we're too white people. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God. Um, the only thing... Okay, so he did Inside... Inside Man has got to be the biggest deviation in his whole filmography, old boy. right? Yeah, yeah, Old Boy is in there, too. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, Inside Man is, is just a straight-up, big-budget Hollywood thriller-type movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, he could he could do something here where it's you know it doesn't have a, a huge message or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, he could do like a straight up thriller. I think it, it, this should be a thriller. Rachel McAdams has she done thriller stuff? Um, yeah, Red Eye. Red Eye. Red oh, eye. that's right. Mm -hmm. so, Casey Affleck, he's I mean he's he's actorly right. Mm -hmm. He can he can pretty much do anything. He's done comedic role in Goodwill Hunting. Yeah. He's done. You know some lightish uh, characters, so I feel like we could get something like a like a like a comic thriller, almost like Black Klansman. Now, obviously, <laughs> it's not at all like Black Klansman. Right, White Klansman, right. but Black, yeah, White Klansman. Yeah. 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 No, Jeremy. No, no, Jeremy. No. Um, that is, that's a joke. That's a joke. Yeah. Is um, Michael Sarah in this too? Michael Sarah's in this too. Michael Sarah's definitely. That's right. Every one of these movies. If you, if you remember nothing else from today, Michael Sarah is racist. Yeah. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Jesus Christ. That's the pull quote. Yeah. That was also a joke. Yeah. Oh, my God. We know that Michael Sarah is one of the 35 people watching right now. <laughs> He's at home like, like hey, <laughs> hey, you yeah, assholes. Yeah, he just commented. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Oh boy! Somebody yeah, just, I, I like this. Somebody just randomly commented, "Don't forget Kate getting naked at some point." So I thought I'd mention that. Okay. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who's getting naked? <laughs> this oh, is from the Kate previous movie, I guess. Movie. I, I see. Yeah. I see. I, th I thought it was just assumed there's nudity in all of these movies. Yeah. I think yeah. it's I assumed think so. there's nudity in all Kate Winslet movies. I think is what. Yeah. Is that the joke? Uh, all right. right. So, so I don't think we made this movie, but let's, let's go another round. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you want to sure? do the honors? For your face. No Kevin Spacey. 
podcast me like one of your French girls, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, so there's another one with multiple entries, so I'm going to go with whatever we don't have here. There you go. Um, actress Shirley Temple, you guys love the dead people. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Loving the dead people. <laughs> with Chris Pratt. <laughs> Directed by Roman Polanski. Oh, oh, wow. oh, that was so wrong. Oh, oh, done. Drop the mic. Oh, We're done. Nope. We're moving on. This is so wrong. We're moving on. Cut. Cut. That is like the most fucked up version of Rosemary's Baby. Oh, oh. It's over. All right. Let's pick oh, three just, more. Just, just, yeah. Yeah. By it's the way, over. this entry that I had to there was three names on it, so I had to take the actress off of it. But there was the actor was Mel Gibson, uh-huh. then Shirley Temple, directed by David Lynch. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't mean to call uh-huh. out somebody in the room with that, but nope. uh, <laughs> okay. So, right, <laughs> Roman Polanski. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We got Denzel. Oh, oh that's good. 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 We good. have Sandra Bullock. Nice. I like directed this. Directed by Akira Kurosawa. This what is a badass. This is a badass action movie. <laughs> Oh, oh man. there's going to be so much ass gonna, Oh, hell yeah. We're going to have to uh, get the ghost of uh, Toshiro Mifuni, the guy he always... Oh, please do. Yeah. So this is going to have to be like a like a Shakespearean, modernized Shakespearean yes. adaptation. That was one thing that Kurosawa was really good at, yeah. was uh, was taking an existing story yeah. and turning it into his own, his own thing. Uh, so yeah, man. But he was also big with samurais. Yes. It's a samurai well, guy. That's what he would do. It would, be, it would be Shakespeare with samurais. I bet Book of Eli, he's basically playing he's a samurai. He's a samurai in Book of Eli. So he could totally do that. Yeah. Sandra Bullock, I've never seen them in a movie together that I can think of. I can't. I think this works, man. Yeah, man. This is, I mean, this is, I mean, this writes itself, essentially. This <laughs> directs itself. Um, Get out of here, Kurosawa. That's right. I'll need your ass. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wreck a warn. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Mine's, mine's a little unusual, I guess. All right. Uh, my first is a recommend. Uh, the reason why I watched this movie is because I was talking about uh, Matthew Amalric uh, a week or so ago. He was in that Blue Room on the right. movie on Mubi, uh, and I was looking at his credits and everything, and I ran across this one movie that he's in, and he's in it for like five seconds. But I ran across the movie, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I remember this." It's called La Mustache. Oh, I um, that. The it's an it's an interesting movie because it's about a guy who has this mustache and he tells his wife, I'm thinking about shaving this mustache off. And she's like, I don't think I'd even recognize you if you cut that mustache off. Um, And so he decides to cut it off. It's time. He's cut it off. She comes home from something and he's he's like he's like, uh, you know, kind of hoping that she'll say something or whatever. She doesn't say anything Mm -hmm. Doesn't say anything about the mustache whatsoever. Then they go to this party. And nobody at the party says anything about the mustache. This guy's had this for years. He even looks at pictures, and he sees that he's got mustache and all this other stuff. I mean, he's had this for years. Um, So finally, they have this, he and his wife have an argument about this mustache. And he's like, he's like, do you not recognize that I cut off my mustache? She's like, what mustache? You've never had a mustache. Hmm. And uh, so... It's the whole thing is about that where he's like he's he's he feels like uh, he feels like she's putting him on because she's been known to do stuff like this in the past where she's like you know there's a story that is told where she um, she apparently like turned the heat up in this one cabin when uh, the power would go out if you turned it up too high and then and then she claimed that she didn't do it and all that type of stuff so he he thinks maybe my wife is. Is is trying to you know troll me in some way, and so there's this sort of seed of distrust that starts coming up from it. And the movie doesn't have any answers, by the way. Hmm. The movie doesn't have any answers <clears throat> about this. It has a lot of uh, uh, trippy going back back and forth between what you don't know is reality or if it's a, a sort of a because there's points where he does a whole bunch of stuff, and then you'll see pictures where in the past five minutes he's been doing completely other things. So you don't know if this is in his mind hmm. or what. Um, it's really interesting. It's, it, I, I sort of decided that these movies that don't have answers 
are really trying to get at another type of thing. Uh, this one is about relationships, and she's and his wife is completely fine with him not having the mustache. Why can't you be happy about? Why can't you just be happy that she she you know she loves you for what you are and mm-hmm. and, and everything? But if but if something as simple as that, I don't know what a what I don't uh, remember you having a mustache. How much will that that grate you and grind you for something that silly? And uh, it's a, just an interesting, interesting movie. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I, I'm probably not doing it much justice, but uh, it's I, I, I'd say give it a look because it's it's one of those movies that will make you think about stuff like that, like relationships and how the smallest things can undermine them. Hmm. Um, this is a French movie, right? Yes, it is. La Moustache. La Moustache. It came out in 2005, 2006. 2005, 86% Rotten Tomatoes, 6.7 on IMDb. That yeah, looks- and I can see why it's 6.7 on IMDb because it's not the it's not one of those type of movies that people watch and go like I want to know the answer, I want to know the the mystery. Uh-huh. And I'm I, in a way spoiling it because they don't they don't give you an answer, but mm-hmm. um, I, I I like that because if they do give an answer, there's not going to be any you're not going to be satisfied with. Yeah, it. yeah. Like, oh, she was trolling all the time? Okay, that's not that's not interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, or he didn't have it the whole time? Well, then he needs to go seek help, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, but it's just one of those just very, very interesting movies. I'm on board with this, man. Yeah. All right, so. That was a recommend? It's a recommend. Who else? Recommend. Are we doing recommends first? Yeah. Can we talk about Triple Frontier? I want, to re- I want to recommend Triple Frontier. Yes. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this movie. It's like one of those movies that, you know, we loved in watching, you know, in the dorm room in the 90s, and it's just all that kind of cool action and stuff, and yet it also ends up having, a, like, a heart and a message, and it actually ends up saying something, which I thought was a pretty interesting, you know, kind of trick, J.C. Chandor, right, that did it? Yes. Uh, I think that's an interesting trick that he pulls off there. So I had a great time with it. I thought, like, it's it's just one of those put the team together, go do something, and it's very, st- like, straightforward, and, you know, there's an objective, and you're never confused about what they're trying to do and the fun that they're having. Has anybody else seen it? I have. I think I I, I have. I watched a different movie, Did you enjoy movie, it? Though. Did you have a good time with it? No. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Okay, I for all of the exact opposite reasons that you well, said. This movie is nine movies in one. No, it's actually, you know what it felt like to me? It felt like a TV series. Like, like Narcos on Netflix condensed all the episodes down into one movie. Mm-hmm. That's what it felt like. And I yeah. tuned out. Two-thirds of the way through, I gave up. Oh, really? Because I was that that's, disconnected. Man, that's where it really got interesting for me. I I, I, well, I love, I, see, I love that the first, I'm going to say more than a third, probably the first half of it, is just straight, like, what you're thinking, action kind of thing. And then, it, you're right, it turns into a couple different movies, but I thought they flowed well together. And I was, ne- like, I was never confused about where we were going or what he was trying to say. And I was always interested in, you know, whatever their objective was. Because their objective changes mm-hmm. okay. through the movie. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right, all right. So, have you get, anybody seen this movie? Okay. Oh, raise a hands who liked it. I okay. got some peeps. I got some okay. Who did? No, and and if you like yeah. it, God bless it, you. It, I'm I'm so it's, glad. It's kind of split down. The I middle. wanted to, because it's got great people in it. It's got it's Oscar Isaac's movie, by the way. It was advertised as Ben Affleck's. Yeah, but it's Oscar Isaac that's the main protagonist. You got what we thought was a, a Hemsworth brother, but it's Garrett Hedlund. <laughs> And, uh, well, it's so great that Charlie, Charlie Hunnam. Hunnam. Charlie it's Hunnam. so great that they play brothers because th- I mean they basically discount each other. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I couldn't tell them apart. But like, yeah, I, I, when you say that it has heart, it's like it's really trying to show you that it has heart, you but think it doesn't. So? It didn't quite get there for me. Yeah, Affleck. Okay, listen, Affleck. His character, like his only thing, his only defining trait is that he's this very responsible leader who never misses a hard out. First fucking thing he does is miss a hard out. Mm. Yeah, but isn't that beautiful? No! Like showing, no! Like that's, that's, the, so you don't want your characters to change through a movie. Like you don't want them to have any... He starts oh, off doing the exact opposite of what he's known for. He doesn't for. start off. He has a moment. As soon he as he has, has the moment. opportunity. I don't know. Ah. I, think, I think it's saying something about how 
You like who is it? I think Tyson said everybody has a plan until you get punched or something like that. I think that's his moment of oh, this is who I was, but I've never been in this situation. Like I've never been faced with what we're facing here. And then his his true character comes out, or a part of him that he didn't know was there, and that impacts the entire rest of the movie. Well, okay, but like they had a conversation on the way over where, or, or in the car with his with his daughter, uh, where he says like you know all those times that we were surrounded by money. And everything, you know, when we were on official government business, we never took it. Right. So that's his reputation. Right. That's his whole thing. I'm with you. And then immediately, not only is he getting greedy, that, that's his whole character arc. God damn it, this fucking movie. His whole, <laughs> his whole character arc in this is that not only that he d- does he get greedy and that leads to a whole thing in, in yeah. the house, but he's... So focused on keeping that money yeah. that he endangers everybody the entire way. It's fucked up. And, and I think that's the point. No, I think that's what no. we're supposed to take from it. I don't think so. they really thought about it that much. Ooh, I do. I do. I do. Welcome to the Triple Frontier like, Mini Pod. Do you like uh, Chander's other stuff? What, is, like, what was uh, Margin most, Call? Most Violent Year. Did you see Most Violent Year? Never saw Most Violent Year. He did Margin it's, it's Call, decent. right? I didn't, um, yeah, he did... Uh, what was the one or am I, I thinking really, of the wrong person? Yeah, he did Margin Call. Okay. Oh, All is Lost. Did you see All is Lost? Ooh. Yes, I loved All is Lost. Yeah, so he did that That's one as well. Movie. So Yeah, I think, well, that, I think he's one to watch at like, least. As Jeremy would say, would say, that one coheses, right? <laughs> this like, is a real word, by the way. Cohese is a legitimate word. Really? really? Yeah. Well, how are you the first person to tell me that? I don't know why. <laughs> What's wrong with all you guys? <laughs> this is a question. Yeah, it's definitely a word. I've been saying it for almost a year. Yep. Well, now I've got to make up a new fake word. <laughs> well, I think he just bit off more than he could chew. I think it's everybody possible. bit off more well, than Well, and you're chew. not alone in how you feel. It is definitely kind of one of those split movies that I think, you know, whether or not you're willing to go along with it or not kind of defines your ride. But I had a great time. No, with it, I so mean, it's, my recommendation. it's weird because I actually enjoyed the process of watching it but then after I thought about it I was like that movie sucks <laughs> anyway there you go right. so I'm glad you mentioned it though yeah yeah um, so I watched Dead Again you've seen this right Chris <laughs> yeah. Derek so this was yeah yeah so this was Brana's follow up to Henry V I believe because that was 89 this was 91 so it's a sequel to Henry V it's a sequel it's to Henry, Henry V <laughs> I thought I had seen this movie, but when I was watching it, I didn't remember anything. But it, has anybody seen Dead Again? 1991? Well, no? Yeah. I'm just watching movies nobody else watches. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, yes. You did? Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I, yeah, I thought I had seen it, but then I was watching it. I didn't remember anything. But anyways, it's I guess you would call it a murder mystery kind Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a murder mystery. Yeah. yeah. But you don't realize that at first, I guess, because it starts off like in the past. I don't know what year that's supposed to be, but... Mm-hmm. Um, it starts off where you think that uh, Kenneth Branagh's character from the past has murdered uh, Emma Thompson, and then you kind of find out that's not everything that it seems. But then it flash forwards to the present, which I guess would be 1991, and there are two people that look exactly like Kenneth Branagh and Emma Thompson, and they end up meeting through for, through various. Well, he's a private detective; he gets hired mm-hmm. to to uh, to track her down, finds her, and. Um, uh, and then that's kind of where the mystery starts. Like, how are these two people existing in present day? And, you know, so then it kind of starts getting into, I'm not going to give it away, but it gets into, like, the idea of reincarnation. But there's a there's an awesome twist with that yeah. Oh, yeah. that uh, really sold the movie for me. And it's just, it's a killer movie. It's like, Because if you're used to Brana doing, I mean, if you're used to, I mean, this, you know, nowadays he does stuff like Thor, and uh, he did the, he did the, the Shadow Recruit movie, Jack Ryan. Yeah. I was well, he did, Jack yeah, Leecher. Murder on the Orient Express, too. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, and Murder on the Orient Express. But, like, you know, prior, in this era, he was just doing Shakespeare. Like, he did Henry V, he did Hamlet a few years after this, mm-hmm. he did... Uh, Much Ado. Much Uh-oh. Ado About Nothing. Featuring uh, the acting Twelfth talents Night. of yes. Keanu Reeves. Yes. Right. I will say, though, Keanu is so much better in that than he is Bram Stoker's Dracula, though. Mm. Like, it's like a... <laughs> All right, let's have a debate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying he's good. Which one is he better in, <laughs> Bram Stoker's Dracula or Much Ado About much Nothing? Of you also, Go! <laughs> much Ado also might be the only movie where Denzel's not that good. Like, that's the only time I think I've ever seen Denzel. I mean, he's fine. <laughs> he's fine. Was good. Calm down. Uh, he's a little weak. Is he really? In that, in movie, that I, think, yeah. I, I don't think he should be doing Shakespeare. But anyways, um, Dead Again. So this was a very different film for him at this time. So it's really interesting to watch. And I wished he, I wished he would have done more movies like this. It's very Hitchcock. 
Yeah, uh, I think is, in a lot of ways. It could have definitely but been a hitch. I'm telling you, man, that I'm I'm a big mystery guy, and twists don't usually get me anymore. But the the, the twist in this movie is just beautiful. It's great, yeah. Um, I can't recommend this enough. Uh, right now, I saw it. I think it's on like if you if anybody in here actually still has cable, uh, or has like the Stars app. I think I think that's who's showing it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, that's how I saw it. There's, but, uh, there's a sudden, but I'm sure you can rent it. Or there's whatever. sudden Campbell Scott that shows up in the movie. <laughs> that is, oh my God, that is true. And, yes. uh, that's that's a great my favorite scene, yeah. type of Campbell Scott. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you just weren't expecting uh, him, and then he suddenly is in the scene. And I, just, I hadn't seen him at Thompson in a long I just hadn't watched her in anything in a while, and I just forgot how just alluring she was back mm-hmm. then and just how magnificent of an actor she is. And she's oh, yeah. so awesome in that movie. Oh, so, yeah, yeah high great. recommend. Uh, okay, you guys? What's your recommend? Trying to decide. Mm-hmm. I'll go with Victoria and Abdul, which okay. is a movie my wife and I just watched recently, and I'm not calling it a, an A plus. It's a nice solid B plus period piece. Judy Dench is the main reason to watch this. She's playing Queen Victoria. Have you seen it? Yes. Um, is it roller derby? Huh? <laughs> Do they do roller derby? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Victorian wagon wheel roller derby. Um, and this is loosely based on a true story about a friendship she develops with. Um, a man from India um, during the time when Britain has control of India. And so she's, Queen Victoria is technically the empress of India. Uh, so these two Indian guys come and they're basically acting as her servants. Um, and it's just a charming little friendship kind of dramedy. Um, I cracked it this time. I watched it. Y- yeah? yeah. Um, Judy Dench is fantastic because she's like the least proper queen you've ever seen in any of these movies like there's a feast early on and she's like tearing the meat with her hands and like (laughs) sinewy bits are hanging out of her mouth she's just got no like manners um but once they start talking and developing the friendship it's really i don't know if anybody's seen this besides okay yeah i I saw it i saw in the theater i i remember liking it i don't remember a lot about it that's kind of the movie it is it's the kind of movie you're gonna enjoy uh that you're not gonna one thing that charms me is all throughout these two indian guys who are from a culture that I think us would consider, back in this time, we would consider them the less advanced culture. Mm-hmm. But there's this running joke of the two Indian guys being horrified at how, how barbaric the British culture yeah. is. Because they're like, at one point, they're like, they put the blood, the cow's blood in the sausage. And he's like, savage. <laughs> um, <laughs> later on, they see some jello that they're going to serve the queen. And they're like, what is it? And they're like, it's fruit. And like, how do you get it to stay in shape? And they're like, well, it's gelatin. This is a pro- byproduct of the ground up cow's bones. And it's like, <laughs> barbarians. <laughs> um, it's just a really charming, fun. B plus, A minus, uh, period, friendship, dramedy. There you go. Mm-hmm. The movie made $65 million. God damn. I'd never heard of it until like a week ago. <laughs> never heard of it until like now. <laughs> that's got to be worldwide, though. That, mean, yeah. that was domestic. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's worldwide. <laughs> uh, okay, my recommend is an old movie from 2010. Mm. Uh, and I had seen this. It's Date Night. Date Night? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. You're recommending this? Yes. Wow. I remember seeing this back in 2010, and I remember kind of enjoying it. Uh, I was drunk as hell when I saw this. I think we've got it now. So I I didn't know if that was the reason that I enjoyed it or or what the deal is. And so I watched it again just recently. This movie is legitimately good. It made me laugh. uh, It's got, you talk about heart. It's got good heart to it. Um, the performances are all great. And I'm going to run down this cast for you. Everybody in this fucking movie is famous, right? Okay, so you got Steve Carell and Tina Fey as mm-hmm. the, the titular dating people. Mark Wahlberg without a shirt, nipples yep. out. Um, Taraji P. Henson mm-hmm. plays one of the investigators. Yep. Billy Fink- Finkner, William Finkner, Billy is, Finkner. is the, the corrupt <laughs> district attorney. I call him Billy, Billy F. <laughs> okay, so then the, the people that they replace are James Franco and Mila Kunis, mm-hmm. which is crazy, right? Mark Ruffalo plays the, the best friend at the beginning of the, the movie. Kristen Wiig plays his wife, who they're, they're divorcing. Common, Jimmy Simpson, who uh, you guys saw on USS Callister, the, the Black Mirror thing. Bill Burr, Leighton Meester, Gal Gadot mm-hmm. plays the girlfriend of uh, that uh, yeah. Marky Mark is yeah. hunting. And, <laughs> in, in the restaurant that they go to, Olivia Munn is the, the waitress, Nick Kroll is the guy up front using that like weird New York thing. 
Uh, Will I Am is in it. But John Bernthal, and then fucking uh, Ray Liotta is the crime boss. Yeah. Everybody in this fucking movie is super famous. I, I, I saw this back in 2010. Mm-hmm. I did not like it. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was the same way. I'm like, look at all these people that are in this movie. But uh, maybe I'll have to watch it again sometime. It's not the funniest movie. It, you're not going to have like the big belly laughs that you do. That's in not great game for night. a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to have like the scene. The, the scene that kills me in Game Night is the the bullet removal scene. That's oh, the, so that's good. one of the funniest things yeah, I saw yeah. all of last year. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, the sentence in the Eight Mile video. Actually, it was that audio. <laughs> Uh, so you're not going to have those moments, but I laughed out loud a lot. Jimmy Simpson, I love me some Jimmy Simpson. He's awesome. That dude should be in everything. He is almost in everything. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, everybody, I, I, I enjoyed it. I think it had more like heart than something like something like Game Night, which has more of just like the, the outright laughs and yeah. action thrillers and stuff like that. So that's my recommend, and All I'm right. sticking to it. It's okay. no dinner nice. for schmucks, though. No. Speaking of Jimmy Simpson, you know what? Jesus I like Christ. that movie. Do, do you really? Wow. Dinner for Smokes. Wow. Dinner for Smokes. Yeah, I don't like that one very much. It was okay. Okay, did, did you did, did did you hate it? I well, I, I can't get past weird blonde Steve Carell. Like mm-hmm. Steve Carell's character is the impediment for me there to mm-hmm. getting into the movie. Have you seen the the foreign film? Yeah. The, the is it the Dinner Game? Is that what it's? I think uh, that's right. Yeah, it's it's. Right. I thought I'd see. I saw it first. That might have been the problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dinner for Schmucks is one of those for me that's one of those that just hit me right. You know? Yeah, I think that I think it's, it's your like other guys. It's my date night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, who's got Warns or Wrecker Warns? Uh, I've got a Warn. Um, Do it, baby. Time? Yeah. Do you remember a movie that uh, was coming out last fall called Final Score with Dave Bautista in it? Yes. Yes. Was, yeah. oh, is, this the, is, this the, is this the Die Hard movie? Yes. Oh, yeah. Is, oh, oh, the one with the soccer this? stadium? It's the soccer stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you see it? Wait, oh, come I on. Is, it. Oh, my God. It's on Blu-ray. <laughs> So is this a straight up Warren or a record? I've been excited it's a about Warren oh, because man. I was I was hoping for so much more fun than it is, but they are taking themselves way too seriously. Oh. Damn it! And uh, yes, uh, Jonathan mentioned Die Hard. I swear to God, there are six or seven scenes lifted straight from Die Hard. <laughs> really? Uh, there's a point where Dave Bautista has to get up on the roof to call the cops. The cops don't believe him. Oh, he has to throw wow. a body down oh, and and get people all you know disturbed and call and all that. That happens. There's a, several lines that are lifted from it. You would think the action on the field would actually ma- like be like sudden death where he has to be a goalie or something. <laughs> None of that happens. There, in fact, there are so many things that happen right in front of spectators and nobody gives it a second look. There's a point where like Dave Batista is like riding a ripping banner down to some place on the and no and everybody's just kinda like, I guess they're I mean, I guess they take their their football seriously in it. So, so they're ripping off rush hour too, is what you're telling yes. me. Yes. Right? Soccer um, hooligans. Yeah, and uh, and it's one of those where I'm just like, I don't know how this works. The bad guys come in they seal all the exits, and somehow nobody in the stadium ever has to go out w- once, mm-hmm. and nobody's like panicking about this or anything. And uh, so they seal all the exits. They uh, they they take over the all the the cop station and everything, and they're just looking for one guy. This one guy is Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> Pierce Brosnan is in the movie for like five minutes. I don't oh. even understand why he's he's a uh, he's some guy that faked his death. And the the this uh, group of freedom fighters want to get him back and and like you know rule Britannia or whatever the hell it is. And, like, and, and, uh, and uh, it, it's it, I don't I'm, I'm sitting there like do, do you really want to go through all of this? Just to get one guy, if you know he's going to be at the soccer stadium and you have the capabilities of doing all the stuff that you do in this, why don't you have a bunch of guys taking tickets? <laughs> and when Pierce Brosnan shows up, you're like, all right, sneak off with him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and Dave Batista's like, uh, he's like, okay, so he's, uh, what is he? He's a soldier who. Uh, he he commanded these troops, and one of his best friends he sent into something, and the best friend died, and mm-hmm. then he comes back. Uh, Dave Batista goes to uh, 
like help out the family while because he's dead and everything. So he's like developed this sort of father daughter relationship with this one this one girl who's like thirteen or fourteen or whatever, and he. He gets her to come to the so she the, his his daughter is in the She's stadium in peril. as well in peril yes. of course yes. she is and uh, and so a lot of the things there like and you sit there and think the bad guys get her at one point and there's a point where it's like oh you can you totally have leverage and they don't use the leverage <laughs> so it's uh yeah it was a movie that I was really hoping to wreck a warn today uh, but it's a straight up warn I'm sorry just watch sudden death then eh yeah so uh, so this movie cost twenty million dollars to make mm-hmm. it made seven hundred and seventy six thousand dollars yeah oh yeah that's about right seventy <laughs> <laughs> percent overall on rotten tomatoes seventy mm-hmm. percent 70? 70 yes How many reviews 5.7 on uh, IMDB it's crazy. Maybe it just didn't yeah. have like a big. Yeah, I have a feeling that's like four critics, and then like, <laughs> yeah. pretty much 30. it's only thirty. The audience score is thirty eight. Yeah, so, Jesus Christ. Uh. Is one of the critics named like Davison Bautista? No. <laughs> yes. I see another one on there named Aaron Dyson. That's weird. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, haven't, oh, I haven't done that one. I haven't done that one. <laughs> but if you didn't know, by the way, Aaron yeah. Dyson is now officially a Rotten Tomatoes yes, movie. Yes, I submit to Rotten mm-hmm. Tomatoes. And that yeah. that's, uh, that's right. is applause worthy. Yes. And he earned yes. that bef- for things he did before he ever came to work with us. Mm-hmm. He's been reviewing for a long time. Uh, but I am Thanks, sort of like se- secretly really happy that we can now say we have on staff an official Rotten Tomatoes reviewer. <laughs> yeah. You can't except, use that we're not critics now To just fur- further murky that issue about whether <laughs> right. or not we are reviewers. So that's going to say more people are not going to be like, see, they are serious. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Who went second last time? I think I did. Um, I'm going to warn a movie that I'm not even sure if you can see because I don't know where... Like, it was supposed to come out last year. It's called Is it Un- a head movie? Under the Silver Lake. Oh, no. That's oh, a war Andrew Garfield. I've yeah. seen ads that that where so I can buy this on Blu-ray, but I haven't been able to find it. So it was, in my, it was in my stack of screeners this year for mm. 2018 awards release, but I think they wanted him to go back and, like, chop it down a little more and maybe re-release it this year. I'm not sure, but it was a mess. Mm. Really? And, and this is uh, the same guy that did It Follows, mm-hmm. um, David... Robert Mitchell. Yeah, David Robert Mitchell. Mitchell. I loved It Follows. I thought it... And I'm not a horror guy, but I thought It Follows was really smart, yep. made a great point. This, I, If there is a point in this movie... I couldn't find it. Now that's still possible. Somebody may be able to educate me on it, but it just it felt like a jumbled mess. Um, it's weird. If you just like something because something's weird, then maybe you'll enjoy it. But I I don't get so into it's things. So for REM fans, then <laughs> that what you're saying? Fair hey. enough. Fair enough. Hey now. What a random pull. <laughs> I'm sorry. Michael Stipe writes garbage lyrics. Just I'm not going to disagree with that, but I still love REM. I, that's fine. But his lyrics are nonsensical. Oh yeah, for the most part, yeah, bullshit. Sure. That's yeah. all I meant. That's I all I meant. I what the songs mean. They're just fun to listen to. <laughs> that's, uh, all, that's all I meant. Not hear you. Hey, I got a question. Okay, so yeah. this sounds a here. lot like Inherent Vice. Oh my goodness, that is exactly what I was about to say. Did you like Inherent? I Vice? hated Inherent Vice. Okay, so yes. it is. It is very similar. So you're it's, gonna it's, love Under Silver. Yeah. You yeah. might. You might. Yeah, actually I love really enjoy Inherent it. Vice so much. I, I. These are the kind of movies that I get actively angry while watching, which very rarely happens. Oh, I would love to see that because because you get you start you just want something to make sense. You just want to get to some point where you're like, oh, I get what you're doing here, mm. and I never get there with with these kind and of angry movies. dicers like a leprechaun. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it. <laughs> Fair seen enough. It. Um, you just got to watch me while I'm do watching. Do they find what's Vice. under the Silver Lake? Uh, they do not find what's under the Silver Lake. Um, I'm out. So the, tra- <laughs> the trailer makes it look bonkers. The, the Silver Lake was in our hearts all along. Um, <laughs> so I just I was disappointed even more for the fact that I liked it follows so much. So I was expecting something. So there may be expectations at play here as well. Mm. Andrew Garfield is certainly like you've never seen him before. It's a weird performance from him. So that's interesting. This movie is interesting. I just didn't find it compelling in any way. Mm, I so. like me some Andrew Garfield. I like yeah. the, the yeah. cut of his jib. He usually yeah. is making pretty good decisions, you know? I mean, even the Spider-Man, like, he was say, good in as, Spider-Man. As much as, as much as I love Tom Holland, I don't want anybody else playing him now. I mean, Garfield was great. There, yeah. there was nothing yeah. wrong with his performance. Spider-Man? Yeah. No, he was awesome. Yeah, yeah he was great. So yeah. we, don't, we don't know how to get this movie under the silver. That's Road, what I'm right? saying. I don't know if they're going to release it this year, no. if they're cutting it. Let's um, sweet it. Next month? Next month. 
Let's make next it ourselves. Month. Next. Oh, month. it's coming Sweet. out next month. So maybe they did do a re- maybe. Maybe the movie you're going to see is different than the movie I saw. I, I, I would yeah, welcome I've seen, that. I've seen ads <clears throat> on movies that I've put in that says it's on Blu-ray now. Wow. And uh, I've looked for it and I yeah can't find it. So hmm. it must be it must be like they thought they were going to come out. They they it was supposed to be last year. I think it's it's listed as a 2018 release. Yeah, they yeah. sent me a screener. So they were thinking this was going to be an awards push, and I think they realized, oh, this actually isn't that great of a movie. It's A24, and so, right? Is it A24? It might be A24. So, yeah, anyways. You should have brought it with you. And God, it's long. Right now. It's, now. it's long, too. That does not look like a movie that needs to be it, two hours It's two hours minutes. and 20 minutes Maybe long. Maybe that's why they had them cut. Yeah, mm. so mm. two hours and 20 minutes of Angry Dicer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from point one. I need to understand this movie now. <laughs> Um, this is so dumb, and I feel like this shouldn't even have to be a warning, but there are so many fans of this series. On St. Patty's Day, I was just bored watching Switching Channels, and Leprechaun Returns was coming on sci-fi. I even, some people might have read my tweet about how I hate myself while I'm watching this. (laughs) Um, people like these movies, and I just, I just, oh my god, I don't understand. Which one is- Does anybody out here like the Leprechaun movies? Okay, okay. No, no, no. And that's fine. And I'm, I'm glad. I wish I, could, I wish I could have the fun that everybody else seems to have with these movies. Which one is this? The original or the... No, this is a new one. This is like a brand new one. It's like it's not Warwick Davis. Did you see... Have you seen this one yet? Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't watch this how many, one. How many are there now? I don't know. There's got to be seven. Are there really? Six or seven. When I, I watched the... First one because we did Montana. Was it Montana? No, not Montana. Which state? North was Dakota. It? North Dakota. Yeah. No, no, North Dakota. <laughs> um, uh, did I, I watched it because I think uh, the North Dakota one didn't have very many movies, and I was like, I need to talk about something here. So I watched Leprechaun, and yeah, that first one, man, is. Oh, so I saw that in the theater. <laughs> I was like, I was, I'm, I'm going to come to you and ask you why you like these yeah, movies. We're, we're, we're going to have a conversation made, about this. They made eight of these movies. Yes. Oh. Yeah. He's gone, he's gone to space, he's gone to the hood. Like the first, what was, what was the one that you liked? Um, Leprechaun in Paris. Oh, that's the first one? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that is in that first one. Yeah, so I, I saw I saw the first one at Williamson Square. Right. Uh, and um, I I haven't ever seen it since. I think I've seen maybe one other one. I know he wasn't like in, he wasn't in Space or the Hood in the one I saw. So I think he was in Vegas. Yeah, I was about to say he was in Space and he was in the. Hood. I think he was in Vegas. Is that the third one? Maybe. Second. One. Okay. So uh, <laughs> leprechaun, <laughs> leprechaun experts in the house. Oh, I know. This is awesome. This is awesome because, but I mean, yeah. But I sat there and watched this whole movie with freaking commercials, and um, it was it was so bad. You know what? I know, no, but you know what? Dicer might like these though because it is just Irish puns oh, yeah. for ninety minutes. Do they have like a fan convention called like a Leprechaun? I don't know, man. That'd be awesome, man. Oh, which is which is that's a missed uh, opportunity if they have it. Which is very different than Leprechaun. Right, that's right. A, that's a very different yeah. thing. But. One, time but I just, they, one time they double booked the arena. Yeah, that was, that a was bad really idea. awkward. But I'm I'm fascinated by it because there's just so many fans and I just I just don't get it. But uh, yeah, no, that's a warn for me. I did not. That, and that's a really it's a really bad thing I've seen. You in know the last what? Couple no, weeks, I don't so. know what it is or something comforting about watching bad movies, no, even there with is, the commercials and all that. I just hate watching. It's it's sort of the exact reason why Jeremy watches Seven Wrong Turns. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and, and I, at and some I, point, I'll watch those. And I decided to watch all the species that yeah, one yeah, night. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's. It ha- I tried so hard to do that. I couldn't make it through twenty minutes of part two, though. And I was like, I'm out. I don't know. That was that was that was too oh, that bad. was too they're much terrible. for me. Yeah, yeah. you got to have uh, a lust for it. I think wrong turn. I could probably stomach, but I'll, I'll I might get to that at some point. But <laughs> the leprechaun, I, I just I can't do. Yeah, it's too much. Just Irish puns and ugly, bad, bad makeup and. <laughs> And this was like they did. Uh, I don't know if any of the other ones do this, but this was straight up like uh, slasherville too. It was all like young kids, and I feel like the other ones it was actually adults. But this is like college students trying to trying to open a sorority house out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're I mean, you're asking to get killed by a leprechaun. Yep. You, are. <laughs> you are. Oh, oh yeah, and it's also a, it's also a go green message movie because it's all about they're building solar panels and. Yeah, it's oh, so it's like Birdemic. Then. Yeah, yeah, it's Birdemic. Yeah, that's a good that's a good comparison. <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not against that. I'm just saying it was a weird 
it was a weird movie to try to put a message in. Yeah. Is all I'm saying. So yeah. <laughs> all right. Bad movie. What's all right. Warn? Should I wreck a warn a twelve year old movie or warn a two year old movie? Hmm. We're doing warns, man. <laughs> Both. We'll do warns. <laughs> okay, so I recently saw this movie called Nerve. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I've seen it. With Emma it Roberts and Dave Franco. This shit will make you angry. No, this movie's awesome. <laughs> no. I think oh. <laughs> it is not um, awesome. Every <laughs> single person I enjoyed myself watching this. I, I uh, kind of did. Too. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really like it's it. It's not awesome by any means. Everybody is miscast in this movie. Um, no one is playing the right role. Uh, Emma Roberts' friend. Blondie, I don't know who she is. She's a. Uh, she in, starts playing. That girl's in the Deuce, by the way. The girl. Oh, is she? Yeah, yeah. All right. um, Blondie in yeah. the Deuce. Um, <laughs> so she starts playing the new hotness game on her mobile, which is Nerve or whatever the fuck they call it. Mm-hmm. And once you 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 have a choice to be a watcher or a player, and if you choose. Whatever you choose, honestly, the game then sucks literally every piece of information about you out of the air. So, like, if you sign up to be a player, then all the watchers get to tell you dares to do. And if you don't do them, you're out of the game. And if you do them, you win money. But they know, like, your address and where you go to church and your favorite pair of jeans because you clicked a button. And then so she goes on the stairs. She's Emma Roberts is, like... Not the daring kind of person, but then flips a switch and decides, well, you know, because my friend cussed me out, I am going to do a dare, goddammit. And then she gets sucked into this whole... It ends... I swear to God, the end of this movie is part of Batman and Robin. Like, yeah, with the, the neon is. paint and the crowd chanting and the, like... And, and the machine gun Kelly. <laughs> oh, shit, really? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stop oh. trying to make that guy a thing. I know, man. It's God. so disappointing. I didn't realize he was in... I don't think I knew who he was when I watched this movie. Yeah. So. I didn't. No. Yeah. Um, it's bad. It's bad. It, they enjoyed the badness of it. Yeah. I did not. I, 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 I don't I remember didn't. much about it. I remember there was a scene where they were trying to cross a ladder. Did that happen? There's two scenes yeah. where, yeah. The, yes, oh, okay. that's a dare. You're in a building yeah. with four floors where somebody put a ladder out to the building next door and you crawl. These people making the dares are so goddamn stupid. They're like, and how do you crowd, like, source that? How do you right. determine the ladder is the one the majority of people When I remember thinking, it kind of felt it. like it ripped off the game a little bit, too, and it... It's based on a YA novel. I, th- I think that's right. It feels like yeah, a YA yeah. novel in yeah. like the most offensive way possible. Also, wreck a warn. Two seconds. Deja vu with Denzel Washington. Whoa. That's the most batshit insane movie you're ever yeah. gonna love. Mm-hmm. And don't bring science to oh, the view. Yeah. <laughs> Tony <laughs> Scott. Yeah, Tony Scott. I was gonna look that up. I like that movie a lot. I'm gonna it's watch awesome. that again. I watched it three days <laughs> ago. As I told you, I watched that movie in New York, and and uh, I watched it with some employees. And one of the employees was like, "I really liked Halle Berry in that movie." And I was like, "That's not Halle Berry. <laughs> it's Paul Patton. It's Paul Patton." <laughs> and she's like, "No, it's really it was Halle Berry." I was like, "It is not." How do you tell somebody? I mean, both very very beautiful women but look <laughs> nothing alike. <laughs> That's funny. My my wreck of warn. I'm gonna just do a quick drive by of it. My wreck of warn is a movie called Traffic, but Traffic with a K. Oh, I saw this on the other day. Yeah, yeah this it. is you saw. You saw. I it, saw right? the whole thing. I was so gonna actually this, use it, but you stole it in the notes. So is this uh, like a straight up like like hillbilly horror movie kind n- of thing? No, oh, no. Okay. It's it's got a little bit of racism. It's got a little uh, bit of prostitution and trafficking. Uh huh. It's got a little bit of salaciousness. Mm-hmm. It's got some, it's got some home invasion. It's got funny everything people. that you want. Yeah, Not it's got some... People. Funny it's, games. Yeah, funny oh, games. Not yeah. funny people. <laughs> yeah. It's got funny biker games. <laughs> the Adam Sandler is a sick comic. Uh, the yeah. Funny games, the home invasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah this... Uh, I. Think I kind of liked it? Nah, not me. You might have. Uh, Paula Patton is the protagonist, and like, you can tell that they're really trying to, not that they need to, but they're really trying to force the empowerment issue down our throats. So we're like, Omar Epps, I'm spoiling this, sorry. Uh, Omar Epps gets killed like halfway through, and it's just like, just kind of yada yada. Like, no pausing to even acknowledge that he's dead. <laughs> He just says something like, uh, oh, she finds the ring. And she's like, oh, all this right. This all gets started, by the way, because she and Omar Epps are driving to this, like, mansion in the middle of the mountains that has an infinity pool. And in a truck stop bathroom, some junkie drops a phone in her purse, and she doesn't find out for 30 more minutes. Yes. That's how this all gets started. Yeah. Like, just, I don't, did you say record war? I said oh, record you kind of liked it. Yeah. I don't want to steal you. I watched, I watched the whole thing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, okay, but my, my warn, okay, take, I'm going to take you back to 1999, which we all agree is a good year for yeah. movies, right? Yeah. I was so steeped in awesomeness in 1999 that I saw a movie called Entrapment that year. Yeah. And I thought, hey, that was a good movie. And then I watched it again. That shit is terrible, oh, man. man. That I don't, shit is I don't think terrible. I liked it then. Oh, I my God. I, I mean, I liked it then. you know, first of all, Catherine Zeta-Jones, who is 29, 30 or so when she's filming this, is one of the most beautiful people mm-hmm. on the planet that I've ever seen. Sean Connery, I think, was 70 when he filmed Also this. one of the most beautiful people on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Mm-hmm. And they tried to make this romance thing happen. And I think imply that it, it did happen uh, towards the end of it. But, like, I got distracted by the, 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 the plotting and the, and the lasers and yeah, the butt and all thing. that stuff. And, uh, and, and I, love me, I love Sean Connery and the Malaysian thing. But, the, God, this movie. This Do you movie think sucks. Michael Douglas was inspired by this movie? <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, I'm trying to he was of, inspired for sure. A lot of us were inspired by this. I just remember that trailer. Then, though, because, oh, were they? Because uh, uh, Mask of Zorro came out, and I think it was like not too long after Mask of Zorro. Wow, I thought they were married long after that. I could be totally wrong. I, could, I mean, I could be totally wrong. Somebody I do just remember that trailer super slowed yeah. down. That shot of her going under yeah. the laser. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, so that like, trailer was cut by a man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> Whole, Probably movie. John Abnett. Yeah. The movie was shot by him. <laughs> yeah. uh, they were married, and they were married at least in 2000. So, so technically, I could be right. Doing. They did. Tra- they were both in traffic, right? Everything to say yeah, that. Okay. No, yeah. wait, wait, no, we didn't okay. say that. Okay, so quick summary of this movie, in case you haven't seen it. So Catherine Zeta-Jones is an insurance agent, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and she specializes in art thievery. Uh, uh, Sean Connery, who's 70 is still like a master art thief, right? And can yep. do all this shit. Mm-hmm. And he's got he's got a pl- oh shit. Uh, he's got a planner <laughs> and he's got he's got a Vink Rames uh, that hey, Ving Rames by the way, PG-13 movie gets two F bombs in this. Really? I think because he's Ving Ving Rames. Oh yeah, yeah. Ving. Um, Martian level F bombs. So <laughs> then so she infiltrates uh, Mac uh, Sean Connery's character his world by pretending to be an art thief, right? Sudden twist turns out that she is an art thief, and she's been using the insurance as the cover. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It so- what I just told you sounds a lot more interesting than the movie you actually get. It's, uh, I don't know how you get, like, all this sexy. Sean Connery's still sexy at 70. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would do him. Uh, or John Emil, I said Abnett. Yeah, it was John uh, Emil, who, who had done a couple of decent things. I was looking him up. But, yeah, stay, stay clear of this. Just mm-hmm. watch the trailer and the it sounds like thing. they saw the... The Thomas Crown Affair and, like, yeah. tried same to imitate year. that. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. of course, that was a remake, but, yeah, same year. Yeah. But that's a great – that's a, actually a really good remake. The Pierce Brosnan one? Mm-hmm. That's oh, yeah. fantastic. Oh, yeah. And you know why? It's McTiernan. Mm-hmm. McTiernan yeah. does yeah, no wrong. That actually that, – and that actually might be a scenario where that – I think that might be a little better than the original. The original's good, but yeah. Steve McQueen, Faye Dunaway. Uh, I meant to ask you, though, when you were talking about traffic, though, so does Michael Sarah shoot Omar up? <laughs> yes. Okay. It, it's weird uh, because yeah. he's in the biker gang. Yeah. Right? And he just, he just shows up to say something racist and then they write him off. It's crazy how many Poor racist Michael things Sarah. Michael Sarah says. God. It was actually him let on that set. that guy have a career, man. I don't know. It was, he's playing himself. <laughs> uh, it's terrible. Uh, do we have time for one more? Uh, I've got a record warrant i got to talk about. Do it, right, do it, we man. have to talk about Love, Death, and Robots. I don't know if any of you have, I have not watched, watched it yet. I on, Netflix, watched it yet. on Netflix. I've been watching a lot of games about the 12 episodes. Time or anything else. I think there's 19 episodes, and most of them are about 10 minutes long. You know, so they're you know, little short films. Oh, okay. This is the record warrantiest thing for me I've ever seen mm-hmm. because it is some of that stuff is brilliant. Like some of the, the things, the ideas they're playing with and the, the sci-fi elements they're doing, some of the art style is absolutely blow your mind gorgeous. Hmm. Some of the realism in the seat, like we are to the point where, you know, we just saw, um, you know, in, in Captain Marvel, the de-aging stuff with hmm. Samuel L. Jackson looks, you know, you can't even tell. Mm-hmm. We are getting close with just full-on CG humans broadening the uncanny valley. Yeah. We're not quite there yet. There are still moments in this in some of the better done ones that feel Uncanny Valley, but there are moments where you're like, oh, no, that's a human being. They shot that on film. Hmm. What is it's, this about? It's Well, it's it's all these Robots, different stories. Robots, love, and sex. That's exactly it. Oh, basically, okay. it should be love, sex, and sci-fi, basically, because not everyone is about necessarily robots, mm-hmm. but everyone has a weird sci-fi concept to it. 
Uh, and then everyone also has, in fact, it almost feels like there's a checklist. Must include nudity. Mm-hmm. Must include gore. You know, yeah. like in, I'm on board so well, far. In, in, I actually thought of you, Barrett, while I was this watching is, this. There is a litany of cartoon this nudity. Is in this. Really? Yes. <laughs> this is Fincher, right? Is that what you... um, Fincher, oh, yeah, Fincher yeah, yeah. Produce yeah, it, produce yeah. it, because I think originally it was supposed to be like heavy metal, too. Ooh, like, yeah. it was, that was the idea was of what they were doing. But I'm telling you, some of this stuff is genius. And then at the same time, it's just so gratuitous. Like, it feels like they had a checklist of... Because I'm not kidding you. Of the 19, 17 of them include nudity. Mm. Uh, it was like it was on the checklist. And, and so it was, it was one of those things Aaron's where I was like... has got like a journal. I do. Uh, you should see my journal. Uh, so it was one of those things where I'm like, okay, can we, just, can we prioritize story? You know, mm-hmm. as opposed to pushing the boundaries. But it reminded me of what you were talking about, how there do need to be in culture boundary pushers mm-hmm. who are willing to do that um, and that kind of thing. And this is definitely one of those things. So I did think of you while I was watching it, Barrett. <laughs> as uh, soon as I saw the but, first cartoon boob, I thought of Barrett. <laughs> yes. That's right. hey, That's real right. quick, Barrett, somebody in the comments asked if uh, Mike Tomlin is a discount Omar Epps. <laughs> <laughs> Consider every time Barrett and I watch a Steelers game, that's exactly what well, we say. What's funny is that um, he's the coach of the Steelers. He's the coach of the Steelers, people. and and they won the Super Bowl. And then Omar Epps at the time was on House, the TV yeah. show. <laughs> and uh, on the next episode, or one of the subsequent episodes, um, he, House walks in and he's like, "I feel like I just won the Super Bowl." And he looks at Omar Epps and he's like, "I bet you feel like you just won the Super Bowl." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, it is um, uncanny. There are there are three or four of these nineteen that I think are spectacular, like great short films, mm-hmm. and even the worst of them are good, you know, mm-hmm. from a story perspective and from a sci-fi perspective. Mm-hmm. And what's really cool too is there's so many diff- different art styles. Only one of them has live action, um, mm-hmm. and it's oh, who is who is in it? it just slipped my mind. I think it's to- Topher Grace uh, and. I forget the girl's name. But anyways, one of them has live action. Everything else is animation. So All right. anyways, that's Love, Death, and Robots. Rick huh? Yeah, nice. for, me. All right. for me. Nice. Yeah. Um, I saw, I don't know if I want to call this a Rick Warn or just a plain Warn. I don't think I have any Rick Warns mm-hmm. today. But, um, but I saw also a movie called Vox Lux. Oh, yeah, Natalie Portman. I hated Vox Lux. Did you like it? Yeah, no. Good. I'm Good. warning. I'm warning on this one. Um, I, I, it starts off, okay, so, uh, there's a 14 year old girl who is a part of a, uh, who is a victim in a school shooting. School shooting starts, starts the, uh, the movie off. And from that school shooting, she goes to a funeral and she sings a song and everybody thinks, oh, she's a really good singer and everything. And sort of launches her musical career based on this funeral that she sang. Mm. Um, and, uh, and so, like, the movie then, like, finds a, a manager for her and it's Jude Law, who's really good in it. I thought Jude Law was good. Um, uh Jude Law takes her to like uh, Stockholm or something like that, where there's a producer that can give her all the sick beats and crap like yeah. that. Yeah, and they're um, always yeah, they're always in Stockholm. They are, they are, <laughs> and uh, and so um, this. 14 year old girl like starts experiencing a lot of things but they do it in a, a very like Kit Purdue rules of attraction sort of way where it's like okay a bunch of stuff happened to her and now we're here hmm. uh, and uh, and so like so she uh, her first album apparently goes gangbusters but then they f- skip in time 17 years uh, to Natalie Portman now playing this character called Celeste hmm. Um, and she's a big deal. She's Madonna type of famous, all this. Uh, and then the girl who was playing her is now playing her daughter. So she apparently, in that whole Stockholm thing, got pregnant at 14 and gave, you know, gave birth to a girl that looks exactly like her, which I always think is weird yeah. in movies. And they did that in, in, in a movie I talked about recently, Goya's Ghost. They did oh, that yeah, with yeah, Natalie yeah. Portman. They did that. She, she uh, gave birth in prison or whatever, and then her daughter looks exactly like Natalie mm. Portman. It's always so weird. Mm. But um, I, I think what the movie was trying to do was saying, was saying, um, even from these horrible events, 
great art can, or, or maybe not great art, but great celebrity can come from it or whatever. And mm-hmm. that even that's even that Natalie Portman though, plays a character that is so unlikable. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, I mean, there's not anything redeeming about her and you understand, no. you understand her character. I mean, yeah, she survived a school shooting. She went through a lot of stuff when she was 14, all that. But when she, when the first scene we see her as is like, uh, uh, dismissive of the paparazzi and like very very angry towards them and and when she's talking to her daughter she's not a very good mom and you know she gets drunk at uh, a little at, she's not even really raising her it's her sister who's mm. the sister is um girl that was a nymphomaniac uh stacy martin um mm. uh was in that and um and uh, there's just it's it's just one of those where you're like, what's the point here? We're missing all the good stuff, and you're trying to make a larger point, I think, about this whole like, well, good stuff can come from bad stuff, or bad stuff begets more bad stuff. I don't know if that's what the point of it was, but I was really expecting a lot more. It's shot in a way that's like a Lars von Trier type of movie. Willem Dafoe is doing the narration. And oh, really? All that, and uh, and you know, with Stacy Martin in it too. It has it's not Lars von Trier though. It's trying to be. <laughs> Throughout the whole thing, um, and Vox Lux, uh, it's voice light. Oh, <laughs> they, okay. They're trying. They're trying to. I think they're trying to say, say voice of light, but that's not how that translates. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's like light. Ariana Grande's tattoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she thought it was seven rings, but it was tiny barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my favorite story, by the way, ever. Uh, but I just yeah. feel like it never comes together in a way that earns what it puts you through the first 10 minutes of the movie. Mm-hmm. The first 10 minutes of this movie are awful. Like, and it's like I don't mind a movie that wants to put you through something as a viewer if it can earn it. And I just never felt like this movie earned it at all. It mm-hmm. just became so shallow after that and yeah. and it just didn't nothing didn't seem to to make much sense of like what point are you actually trying to make about celebrity? It's mm-hmm. obvious you're trying to say something about shallowness and celebrity and that kind of but it just well, it yeah, never they, landed. They stick the they stick the school shooting in there. There's a brief reference to 9/11. Right. And then like uh and you and you think okay, well there this 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 uh, woman's career has been built on tragedy or right. whatever, but there's really no payoff to exactly, all that. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh big warn, another warn from me today. Hmm. In the shallow la la. <laughs> I got nothing else. We, no, we snuck in two in our last round. We did. Yeah. <laughs> you did. They, yeah. Don't think I didn't notice. <laughs> did you have uh, another one, Jonathan? Uh, I mean, no, nah, not a really good. I mean, I, I rewatched Valentine for some freaking oh, reason. What? The 2001. <laughs> yeah. There, uh, um, I got a copy of the Blu ray. It's a long story. But mm-hmm. um, uh, that is a terrible and also outstanding movie. So mm-hmm. that's kind of. <laughs> that was just mm-hmm. my. I Civil remember Catherine war. Hegel being in it, and I remember, uh, was it David Boreanaz? David Boreanaz, Denise Richards, uh, prime Denise Richards, yeah. uh, uh, Jessica Capshaw, um, oh, yeah. and then uh, what's the... This is Gary Marshall's Valentine's Day? Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> the main girl is... Uh, Fuck that movie! <laughs> Marley, oh, I cannot think. Marley of Shelton. Marley Shelton. Thank mm-hmm. you. So that's yeah. It's got a it's got a fun cast, and it's just uh, it's a post scream. It's actually was probably like the last post scream theatrical slasher mm-hmm. i would say like when it was the kind of the death knell and i mean it's super bad like it, there's nothing good about it but i guess it's my leprechaun like mm-hmm. it's just it's so entertaining what is it about these fucking movies that are light as a feather but somehow have like a seven paragraph entry in wikipedia <laughs> describing the plot like every this is the entire script yeah, of that movie and, if you go to wikipedia and look for the plot of something like gettysburg it'll be two sentences yeah. there was a <laughs> battle about valentine's got seven paragraphs yeah. is that what you're talking about that's hilarious and I, I will say the the mystery element of it is is not handled well but it is it is cool like it's a, it's, it was a good idea was this uh, they don't too? execute it very well. And they also, if you look at the back of, I think it's like the old DVD cover, the VHS cover, they give away who the killer is. But, <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah. Th- th- this wasn't a remake, too, was it? No, no, no. Yeah, it, it was an Oh, original My Bloody story. Valentine. Yes, yeah, My Bloody yeah. Valentine's another movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, this was uh, Jamie Blanks. He was the one, he actually directed Urban Legend also. So oh, another yeah. Another post scream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this was his follow up to that. Mm. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that'll do it for this episode. That's right. Uh, Thank th- you, guys. This is uh, this is also going to our normal people, right? Yes. <laughs> on, on you guys are not normal. <laughs> um, this will uh, be available on Monday. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, if you want to comment on this, go to Syncast presented by CinemaSins, uh, 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 CinemaSins Twitter, uh, SoundCloud. Uh, we're on uh, Discord. Uh, there are a lot of places that you can go and uh, actually uh, comment on this very episode. Tell and us what you thought. If you were a patron and signed up for our Patreon, as these people, these good, solid Americans and Canadians and, and Australians <laughs> and, and everything, yes. you would be here. You would be able to, to live stream this event. Um, we're, we're doing this in front of our uh, sinflowers and everything. Actually, Aaron, would you like to yeah, name shout check our sinflowers? Uh, shout outs to Brian and Samantha. Yeah. Uh, Blake and Allison. Uh, that's Blake Hodges and Blake Hurst as well and yeah. Pierce. Uh, Darren, uh, Dexter, yeah. uh, Dylan and Daniel, Evan in China, Isaac, uh, and then we've got Jacob, Jeffrey, Jim, Joshua, Louise, who came from Australia, Woo-hoo, by the yay. way. That's a lot of J names. That is, yes. Well, you know. Yeah, screw all you people that came from, like, Michigan and... <laughs> I, thought you were say, I thought you were going to say that they didn't have J names. I was going to feel very offended. Uh, Marvin is here. Um, Mike and Summer are here. Dan and Nathan. Frank and Joseph. Michael, Miranda, Andrew here as well. Thank you so much. Yay! Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, well, that'll do it. That'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> For Chris Atkins and Jeremy Scott, Barrett Share, Aaron Dicer, and Jonathan Watkins, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. In the room, be thinking uh, as you lunch about questions that you might want to ask because the next session is all about answering you guys' questions. So, yeah. And then we're going to add the people that were hanging out with Chris last night. We have questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also, you can't spoil a movie that old. Can't. So, well, we didn't spoil anything by saying he's No, we didn't. I almost did just now. Just I didn't. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The movie where he's... Kate Winslet. Yeah, Kate she's, Winslet. she's not scared. Of yeah, Kate Winslet stuff. is by, in like at least ten movies. Even in PG thirteen movies, she's Even like. In I, is there a way that I can like, yeah. show my t- <laughs> 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 Am I only remembering that this is law? <laughs> there was a, this, remind, this reminds me of when Barry Sonnenfeld was directing Men in Black, and yeah. uh, and Linda Fiorentino was in there, and he goes, "I don't know if you want to do this. There's no nudity." In it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I like that. He did say that, <laughs> and, then, and she's like, "She's like, I just thought it was funny. He thought I wouldn't want to do it because there's not any nudity." In it. <laughs> do I need to I'm eat good. the mic? Dude, Nashville has no traffic and no construction. I don't know what you're talking about. That's one of those when you read over the script, you're like, I know there's a lot of people who like you, but I love this this sentence. <laughs>